The following thoughts and opinions we're going to discuss regarding this album are strictly of our own personal interests. We are not professional music reviewers. We encourage respectful discussion and friendly banter in each episode, but we do not condone and will not tolerate bullying or belligerence. You are welcome to take what we say regarding the albums we rate with a grain of salt. Well, hey there, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Rate the Record podcast, episode 70. Yeah, no jokes this time. No, we have to wait a, a hundred and sixty-eight more episodes. Uh, no, I don't even know anymore. Like a, a ninety-nine more episodes. There you go. I can count. Yeah, you can't. Exactly. Uh, so your your hosts, who clearly don't know what the hell math is, are Chris and Savannah, and that statement has not been any more true. Well, I'm glad that we can both agree on that because I usually come up with those like little things on the fly, and that's why I probably repeated like a bunch of these <laughs> jokes in the past. <laughs> That's okay. But anyways, yes, that is us. And yes, this is the Rate the Record podcast. So welcome to the show today. Glad you're here hanging out with us, listening to music, ranking it, rating it, doing it, whatever you want, or just listening to us ramble on about it for about an hour or so. So thank you very much for joining us. Uh, and I mean, if you're new here, then you know what the show, uh, I mean, if you're not new here, if you've been here before, you know what the show is all about. You know exactly what we do and that we do indeed ramble a lot like I am right now. Or if you're new, you don't know that. So, I mean, get ready, I suppose. But anyways, we do other things as well. So see, each week, Savannah and I will discuss an album completely. It can be completely at random, I should say. Like we can just pick whatever the hell we want. Sometimes it's celebrating an anniversary like today's album. We'll talk about in just a moment. Yeah. And we also take requests. You can always submit those we do them we've done a couple this season we got more coming so by all means submit them regardless we do choose an album we discuss it front to back at length then we rank the songs and then we rate, rate the, the record. record yay that's that's like one of the first times in a while we've actually been on it well it's because i'm not being a sassy piece of crap so you're welcome Yet. for once Yet. Yet we are just at the beginning Exactly. And we had a whole week off to have a refresher and everything like that. Although I don't think a week is nearly as long. Man, screw this podcast. Let's take, just take like a month break. Let's take two months. Done. I don't know. I'm going to Hawaii. See you later. All right. Take my headphones off. See you later. <laughs> that's it. Just shut it down. <laughs> that's, exa that's exactly just like before we even start. It's like, you know, what? we'll do this when I get back. <laughs> oh, God. I'll leave this recording the entire time. We'll just do it when I get back. <laughs> But yes, uh, this that is the Rate the Record podcast. This is the Rate the Record podcast. That's us. And so make sure that if you like what you see and or hear today, make sure you hit like, subscribe, rate, share, follow, uh, and comment too. All of those things really do help build the musical community. I say that every single week, and it's true every single week, and it still continues to be. It helps build this musical community that we're trying to build brick by brick by whatever by ad material here, whatever you want, whatever you build your houses out nowadays that aren't necessarily brick. Um, hay and cow patties. I was going to say, maybe you live in the forest and you like use logs and sticks. I don't know. Whatever. Cool. Regardless, we're building that. It's a musical community. We want you to be part of that. All of that really, truly helps. It's all free to do. It's all easy to do. It only takes a couple <clears throat> of seconds. And by all means, we have so much content covering so many different bands that you're bound to find something that you like. So make sure you go back and hit like buttons on those ones too. Yeah. What he said. Mm -hmm. Exactly. I'm the leader here. <laughs> Whatever. We did do animals as leaders, so I mean. <laughs> what does that have to do with anything? Uh, you being a leader, you're an animal, et cetera, et cetera. I suppose, and I'm wearing a tiger cat shirt today, so there you go. It all See? ties in. So today we're talking about animals as leaders. <laughs> oh, shit, wrong. <laughs> no, animal. that was no. before. Hey, we might do another one soon, but today is not that. Today oh. is indeed episode 70 and celebrating its 30th anniversary as of March 22nd at the very least is Depeche Mode and their 1993 album Songs of Faith and Devotion. Yes, and I had to postpone recording this for a whole seven and a half minutes while I rifle through my house trying to find the one t-shirt that I finally have that is relevant to the show. So take a look, take a look. Sorry, audio listeners. Uh, just Google the album cover. I don't know. Hello. I mean, essentially, because your shirt is literally the album yeah. cover. And the back of it is just the list of the song, uh, song so tracks, like, album tracks. Yeah, It, it, it sounds like a, uh, like a knockoff shirt. Then it's just like they literally scan the front and back of the CD. Here's a shirt, 20 bucks outside of a concert type deal. If you can guess where I bought it from, and I bought this when I was like 18, so it's like 20, I don't know, 15 years old. Um, if you can guess where I bought it from, yes, you're probably correct. 
Okay, well, it was either just outside the Air Canada Center after Depeche Mode played and some dude on the corner selling a shirt for 20 bucks. In 93. It's one of those weird knockoff stores that are in, like, the basements on the street or something like that. And it's like, it's all band merch, but none of it's real. Hot Topic. In the States. Oh, ooh, Hot Topic. Yeah, ooh. yeah I think I bought Do this in... know who the hell Depeche Mode is? <laughs> I bought this in, like, 2006 or something, so, yeah. Damn, I, I, it's a very nicely fitted shirt, but I, you can tell by the holes in it, and there's so many more that I've worn this thing to death. It is retired. It has come out of the box just for today, and it's going right back into the box. It's retired, but it took that one shift as a Walmart greeter. Yeah, and then everyone at Walmart decided that that person's far too slow and dumb to work there, even though it's Walmart. Then they're like, yeah, you got to go. You can do one shift, but then you got to go. Yeah, I mean, if you need a couple extra bucks, we're here for you, I guess. Mm -hmm. Exactly, exactly. So, yeah, with this podcast, again, with all the stuff I mentioned before that you can, like, like, comment, and all that kind of stuff, too. Make sure you're also following us on social media at Rate the Record Podcast. That is found over at RateTheRecord.ca. Like, all the links for that, all the streaming links. But also found over there is the album giveaway link. We are giving away albums every month so far this year. And for March 2023, we are giving away Bush's 16 Stone brand new vinyl copy. So make sure if you want to grab one of those, go ahead and uh, enter your information in there so that way you could potentially win that album. And uh, just so you know, UK listeners out there, we are working on something a little special specifically for UK giveaways since we haven't been able to do that yet. So you are going to be involved at some point. So please stick around. I promise you it's going to get good. Yes. And if you enter, then you can you possibly could win the record that has my favorite song mm, on it. So, cool, and that could be any record, not hear, necessarily this one. Yeah, who 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 doesn't want to hear Bush's? Mm, so, you know, what I'm might saying? have to go back to episode thirty nine to f- figure out what the hell mm, is. Exactly. I'm just gonna keep bringing up past episodes just so you can just keep putting cards up, just over and over and over. And, and because and because you don't actually watch the episodes, you won't even know how I'm going to address this in the edits and the uploads. Yeah, and like that. it's all I, good. I've, I've said this before. I'm too critical of myself. I will never watch these again. So. Uh, and spe- uh, aside from Bush and the album giveaways too, but you can also request an album too. That's another link you could do. Found it right through record.ca. So once again, go there, go to the album request form. Uh, and Hey, send something in. Maybe we'll listen to it. Maybe we won't. Uh, we do have one more coming up for sure. Possibly two. I don't know. I had to Ooh. relook at the list, but Hey, we got more. You add your name in there and by all means, we can take a look at that again. All of that found at rate the record.ca. Mm-hmm. But I should also mention one more thing found at RateTheRecord.ca is if you like us enough to want to pay for us to do things, there is Kobe.com slash RateTheRecord, its own separate link, or found at RateTheRecord.ca. Regardless, five bucks a month gets you into the RTR club or just a one-time donation or donate as many individual times as you want. Regardless, it's optional. It's there, though. You get bonus content. You get shout-outs and everything like that, uh, card in a name at the end of the video. And uh, if you got a band and you want us to be to your music, then by all means, we'll do that, too. We will. We will. Don't test us. We will. We've, uh, I, I think we've proved that way too much already. <laughs> uh, I, I'm going to go ahead and say uh, you're welcome um, because I have been berated and told multiple times on and off air um, that it is my fault. So I'm sorry for B tearing all of the albums. Uh, it will not stop. It is who I am. Thank uh, you. That, that's the problem because the B tier is becoming overstacked at this point. What? What? You can't get enough of a good thing, though. Uh, yeah, I, I can't get enough of the A tier, but the B tier I'm just tired of, okay? So that's enough of that. Well, let's see where we go with Depeche Mode. B stands for consistency. That doesn't even make sense. But regardless, that's what it is. So you know what? We are going to talk a little bit about Depeche Mode and Songs of Faith and Devotion. But here's the thing. I've been talking way too damn much, so I honestly don't feel like reading the description at all. So instead, I have an AI version of myself to read this. And I- I'm not kidding when I say this, so I won't tell oh you what God. I do for work or where I work. But occasionally I do use a program called Descript. And I can a- I registered my voice in it, so I actually have a 100% official AI voice in this program now, which actually kind of terrifies me a little bit. And I have not heard this. I knew it was happening, but it has not been vetted by me. So this is my first reaction as well. So uh, just so, yeah, so the YouTube... YouTube, you'll be able to see our facial reactions and everything like that. Audio listeners, I'm going to say this once. I promise you, this is not a gag. I did not pre-record this. This is 100% me in AI form Reading yeah. the description for Depeche Mode and their 1993 album, Songs of Faith and Devotion. Depeche Mode are an electronic synth rock band from Basildon, Essex, England. 
They formed in 1980 and originally went by the name Composition of Sound, but was changed to Depeche Mode soon afterwards. The band in its current state consists of vocalist Dave Gahan and keyboardist and guitarist Martin Gore. For the sake of today's album, only mentioning the other members at the time of this album's release, there was Andy Fletcher on keyboards and bass, and Alan Wilder on drums, keys, and piano. Alan Wilder left the band in 1995 due to creative differences and would go on to create the band Recoil. Andy Fletcher passed away on May 26, 2022 at the age of 60 after suffering an aortic dissection. The band originally formed when original vocalist and guitarist Vincent Clark and Fletcher performed in different musical acts together as well as separate. Eventually when Clark and Fletcher created Composition of Sound, where they would recruit Martin Gore, they would also recruit Gahan around this time after they discovered him at a Scout Hut jam session singing a cover of David Bowie's Heroes. They released their debut album Speak and Spell in 1981 which appeared at number 10 on the UK album charts. Later that year, Clark announced he was leaving the band. The band would find moderate success through the coming years, and would eventually release one of their biggest albums to date in 1993, and that would be Songs of Faith, and Devotions. This album was released March 22, 1993 and was released through Mute Records, Sire Records and Reprise Records. It was recorded in Madrid and Shadow du Pape in Hamburg, Germany. The album was produced by the band themselves and a producer by the name of Flood. The album has gained largely positive reviews including multiple three-quarters and four-fifth reviews, including a four-fifth from all music. Worth noting, Entertainment Weekly and the Calgary Herald both B-tiered the album. The album hit number one on 11 different charts, including US, UK, Canada, European, Australian, and more. The album went a total of two times platinum and six times gold across eight countries, and has sold over four million units worldwide. The album spawned four singles, I Feel You, Walking In My Shoes, Condemnation, and In A Room. In A Room. <laughs> oh my god, that is wild. That is some deep fake shit. I had oh to read uh, like a like a twenty minute script, uh, like into this program, to, in order to get my voice to sound like that. Obviously, you can tell like there were some certain words in there that yeah. were like a little four flubbed. fifths. I love that. Yeah, three quarters and four fifths. <laughs> all music. Our good friends over at All Music gave the album four fifths. <laughs> so, so like just sort of off to the side. When you were reading sort of the script, is that just to get like syllables and sort of uh, letter combinations and stuff? Because aside from the minor sort of mistakes or inconsistencies, that was really creepy. <laughs> yeah, um, it kind of gets your flows and mannerisms and everything like that. Yeah. But I, I was kind of like reading it like a a documentary style script, I guess. So like I was kind of reading it like this. I'd always had that drop off at the end of my reading. And yeah. so then it, it definitely caught on to that. And you can hear that in the little description there. Wow. I don't know if I want to do that. That took a while to do. I'm not going to read a 20 minute script again. You already yeah. have an AI voice once. I'm not giving you another one unless I read it like this. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Could you please, could you do that for Halloween? Like speak it like, like Vincent Price. Do you want to do an entire AI episode? <laughs> yes yes for, i would specifically for kofi i would, I would just do a full oh AI God. generated episode yes i i would spend 20 minutes to do that 100 percent. well uh thank you computer me uh please don't replace me unless i give you permission uh so with that out of the way we can finally actually start talking about the album at the very least i'm actually really here in real life to do this i am human so let's start talking about the album then so it's song number one i feel you the beginning is alarming, not only the beginning of the song, but the beginning of the entire album. It sounds like tires screeching before a collision, and I wasn't really sure where it was going to go. And I do just kind of want to preface all of this with when I bought the shirt that I am currently wearing, I had not listened to the album. So for this Poser. show, this is, no, no, I like the I like the band, but it was just the only band related shirt that there was. Um I like the band, but I like their like earlier stuff, their 80s stuff, their first couple albums, whatever. Um, but uh, this is the first time I've actually heard it. So I wasn't really sure where this song was going to go. Um, I did find the main guitar riff kind of became a like grading and a little too repetitive. Um, but aside from that, it wasn't too bad, I guess. I just I think it was different than what I was expecting I feel like they tried something different with this album and it just wasn't what I thought, you know? Well, cause I know that they got like a little darker and 
like I don't want to say aggressive. That's not the right term to use, but like yeah. their sound became a little bit heavier than it was known for being, mm-hmm. like back in the eighties. Uh, so, so this is actually the Depeche Mode I'm more familiar with, and like I'm like the only person I know who likes their two thousand one album Exciter. Ooh, I like their two thousand nine uh, Songs of the Universe. I think it's called. I don't believe I, I heard that one. Yeah, I like that one. Uh, but for this song though, uh, it starts off in three, four time, a song that actually starts in three, four, not four, four. So, Hey, you caught my attention like right away. It's like, <laughs> Oh, that's different and kind of neat that they did that. Yeah. Usually you save that for a couple of songs. Then when people are already getting acclimated to everything, um, I can see this song opening like a whole concert, like while the stage is like still smoky and the lights are like shining hard through that fog and everything like that. You just hear this music while they're doing the thing behind lights and fog. I think that's really cool. I think it would fit like that. Oh, yeah. there's, there's my uh, my my mental vision of the day. We don't usually do that anymore, but uh, no, I have I have a couple on this one, but it, it didn't spark too too many like some other ones. Fair enough, yeah. Um, I do like how full and energetic the chorus feels. Like it's a great way to kind of kick things off without it, without having it go too overboard. And spoiler alert for the rest <laughs> of the album, it doesn't really ever go overboard. Like it never gets too ridiculous or anything like that. So yeah. That note only means so much this early into the album. <laughs> I I felt like the song was like, it felt a little longer than it really is. I think because at the end, the minimal change to the, the vocal li- or the, I guess, lyric lines, there's only like one or two words that are changed. So to me, it sounded like he was just repeating the same thing over and over and over again. And I was kind of like, okay, like, when are we done? Let's hurry this up. But it, it did take many listens for me to really get into this. And that's definitely my overarching uh, sentiment for the entire album. It took a really long time for me to get into it. Like I, over the week that we were off, I listened to it maybe six times. Damn. And then another like three or four. It just, because I know the band as something else, it just... I think my expectations were still with that. So listening to this, I was like, what the fuck is this? This is okay. This is weird. Yeah. Um, you're, you're used to the Depeche Mode who sings. I just can't get do, enough. Do, 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 do. Yeah. Right. <laughs> but like, like their, their album that came before this violator, like that was good. I'd like enjoy the silence. And like one of my favorite songs, yeah, it's, no, it's no good. I'm like, I love that. This is awesome. But I don't know. I, I've, there was a different vibe to this one. I don't know whether they they're just like trying something different or if there was just like a I don't want to do this anymore. So we're begrudgingly doing this. I don't know. It just it felt different, but not different in a way where it's like they're excited to do it. You know what I mean? I don't well, know. When, when you look at this album on Wikipedia, it, like when it, it usually lists like what style the album is in or like yeah. what's the band, the, the album itself said uh, synth industrial and grunge. Oh, really? Oh, I, like, I think maybe it got that out of one song and that was Maybe, it. yeah. Like I didn't hear a whole lot of grunge. Yeah. But I mean, you could still be influenced by something, but not necessarily have it be part of your sound. So maybe it's in yeah. there somewhere, you know, just in its own little way. At least it's not like other albums we've done where you've said that they've worn their influences or the time period on their sleeve. So well, that's maybe usually that's like good. the first couple of albums from a band yeah. that'll do that. But this is like, I think their eighth album. So, I mean, like yeah. they're well into their career. They're, they're obviously taking a new step with this album and it's one of the biggest albums they have. So, I mean, yeah. like obviously did good things for them. Mm-hmm. Um, the only other things I have to say are like, um, I do like the pulsing sound that kind of bounces back and forth in the stereo. It's not super abrasive. It just kind of adds like a little bit to the, like the overall atmosphere so i enjoy stuff like that especially in the headphones yeah and i mean i think it's a fun start to the album is it a positive sign i mean only time will tell at this point for me it was okay um i do like the depth of the drums uh they're probably just floor toms so it was just a little bit more bassy without being the bass drum so i was like i really like that that was cool um, I did make note that it was a it was definitely a turn from the heavily synth sound that I'm used to, um, but we'll see how the rest of the album goes because, uh, like I said, it took me quite a while to get into this song, let alone the entire album. So, and yeah. some of these songs go on pretty long, actually. Yeah, like some of them are like closer to six minutes, like the next one. I think one of them's like six and a half minutes too. Like some of them go. Oh, dang. So yeah, on to the on from the first one to the second one, taking a walk in my shoes. Number two, walking in my shoes. 
every 90s playlist that I listen to has this song on it. It's either this one or, oh my gosh, there's one off the off Violator because that came out in 1990. Can't remember what it's called. Probably starts with a W. But um, I, I every time I hear it, I do start to understand why it's always included. But like the last one, again, I'm going to try not to repeat myself. It took me a long time to kind of get into it because I'm listening to it and I'm like, okay, this is fine. I guess it's not really giving me the energy that I thought it was going to. But walking away from it, the chorus was sort of an earworm. So that was a plus for me, because if I can leave a, a newer like a new song to me, uh, remembering what the hook is, then you know that it was appropriately written. They they achieved their goal. Which is interesting because there's a lot of um, choruses on this album that aren't necessarily super memorable, but they're just well-written anyway. Yeah. Like, I do like the way some of them are. So, I mean, I, I, I don't recall if I mentioned that too many times in the upcoming review, but we'll see when we get there. Yeah. Um. But yeah, like, this song immediately kind of gave me these vibes of something I've probably heard in like some sort of like dark lounge with a bunch of like prissy quasi goths drinking weird martinis. <laughs> Look, oh more vision, gosh. more visionary stuff coming out of my head for this particular song. Are there martinis like smoking with uh, like dry ice and such? It's got like wormwood and stuff in it. Yeah. It's got actually it actually has the actual worm in it, too. So it's just like oh. really authentic, like, you know, uh, absinthe, I believe it is. European Gross. absinthe. Gross. I, I actually, uh, we used to have a like a darkish kind of lounge here in Hamilton. I've been there before, but it was like a long time ago because it's long gone. Oh, yeah. I used to, uh, Infusions, I think it was called. Interesting. Regardless, it was pretty cool. And so that kind of reminds me of that place. I miss that place. Oh. Um, yeah, there's like a constant moving bass line in this song, too. Like, kind of really helps the flow of the song, which I guess it doesn't need too much help with because the song just feels like it's always moving, anyways. But the bass line does a lot to help that. Yes. Um, and also, I one of my favorite parts is actually the pre chorus, too. Like, it's got really cool harmonies and interesting chord progressions in it. Um, especially because none of the chords really feel like they truly resolve until you get to the chorus. So it just, it's like one big blue balling session until you get to the course i really like it though it's a, it sounds really good it's not too long so you're not waiting too long so i like it uh i definitely agree with the bass um my note was i like the constant bass that found its place directly in my chest it was just sort of pulsating there i really liked it um <clears throat> i really like the bass and the drums with the piano it kind of eve it um sort of balanced out with the sort of lightness of the piano and then the deep sort of bass drum feel that was cool. Um, even more so in the chorus. And uh, I definitely can see why this was a single. I'm pretty sure it was. Um, yes. Wasn't I was too enthralled with the uh, AI thing to even hear what you were saying. Um, but uh, there has to have been a radio edit because it did feel like it felt like almost five and a half minutes, five and a half minutes long. Um, but there had to have been a, a radio edit, maybe cut out a chorus or two. Um, but aside from that, I actually like the song. So I feel like we're, we're on a positive note track two. I think for me, it's, it's going all right so far. We are one fifth of the way through the album and so far so good ish. Yeah. Ish. Yeah, only 10 songs, too. So, I mean, I, I guess it's because it was like 93, too, and like they started in 80. So they're, they're used to making yeah. albums that are like eight to 10 songs because that's the old that would fit on a record. Yeah. And then they're like, you don't have to. And they're like, this is what we're doing. Oh, good. 26 song album. Here it comes. <laughs> and we're oh reviewing it next week. Oh, my God. Hell no. In three parts. Oh, my God. I, I don't I don't know if I'd want to do that. We we. <sighs> We have a long one eventually, eventually coming up, but uh, yeah. I won't say what it is, and I'm not looking forward to editing it. I'll say that much. I don't even think I know what it is, so it'll be a surprise when I show up. No problem. It's it's long enough that I don't even think it's on our list right now, so don't worry about it. Oh, ah, good. Uh, all right, so we'll just move on to song number three, I guess. So uh, the third single, already the top three singles so far, kind of in the top three of the album here. Number three, Condemnation. Okay, so... Now, if you've listened to this show before, you know that out of the two of us, uh, I'm kind of the moron, right? So she said it, it not me. Yeah, no, I did. It it wasn't until this track and thinking, 
it sounds like he's singing in front of a gospel choir. And then I thought, I wonder if this is a concept album. And then did I realize what the title of the fucking album is? I went, you are a moron, girl. You are so dumb. (laughs) Because like even throughout the whole album, he's like talking about like retribution and down on my knees and praying for this and everything. I'm like, hmm, I wonder if this is a The, the fucking title. Duh, pay attention. So I felt very silly. Um, but didn't really care much for this song until the uh until the vocals wait until the break in what the fuck does that mean? Until the vocals break in and that sorry carried the till the break. Oh, oh, okay. That she makes did sense. say she was the moron of sense. the group. That was say, well, I also can't read. Okay. Um, I thought it was break in, like break in, but I actually didn't care much for this song until the break in vocals that carried out the song because the vocals stopped and then it was just the music that they carried the song out. I like that. But with the vocals in it, I was like, I'm not really down for this. Even just like the humming at the end, because like the oh, I like jump- that. I was gonna say because I, yeah. I, one of my notes, but I'll just jump to that note right now because uh, the vocal harmonies towards the end are actually like really great. I do like it. Oh, yeah, uh, it's like just a bunch of single layers underneath everything else, but I really like how they sound on the main melody because it's like a very kind of strange harmony, not mm-hmm. the notes you would think to hit, but it works so well. So I I really like that. Thought that was cool. Great way to end the song and everything like that. But like rewinding back to the beginning, um, yeah. The mellow kind of like gospel feel to the track is a really good come down like for three songs in. So, I mean, like you can't wait too long for something like that. Good yeah. time for it. Uh, I thought this was a great display of le- uh, the lead vocals, too, in this song. It just like uh, it's very much like the main driving feature that's like pushing the song forward. So this is a good time to really have it on display. Uh, yes, I actually don't have too many notes uh, on this one. Other than like the vocal melody, it kind of lost me many times. Um, I I don't know. It's just it. uh, I would listen to this as part of the album, like part of the whole, but individually, like in a playlist or sandwiched between two other bands, two other Depeche Mode songs, probably wouldn't hold up as well. Um, But again, that melodic humming at the end, it is during the the entire song is just not as melodic and it doesn't sort of take on a life of its own until the end and i i really enjoyed it i could have been fine just listening to an entire song of that i don't know why i liked it but it piqued my interest from the beginning and i was like oh this is cool after 74 different listens i still liked it so that was a plus at the very least at at least this song was only three and a half minutes so you didn't have to like spend too too much time with it Well, I I also made note that it it felt shorter than it actually is. Some of these songs felt a little longer than they really are. Um, And I don't mean the ones that are actually long, but this one felt really short, I think, maybe because I sort of uh, see it as two different parts where it's like the vocals, then the non-vocals. So the vocal part just kind of made it feel shorter because it wasn't the whole song. You know what I mean? Does that make sense? Yeah. No, yeah, I I got you because I, yeah. I kind of got the same idea. It's different parts of the album too. Uh, yeah, when it felt long, it felt long. And there's one song in particular I can't remember which one but that felt way too long. Yeah, it might have been one of the longer ones too. So look at that, it fits. Uh, yeah, the only other thing I have to say is like that this song just feels very warm. It's kind of a feel good vibe to it and everything like that. The instrumentals are very pleasant. So I I like this one uh, probably more than I thought I would um, uh, from my first original couple of listens so yeah i don't know i enjoyed it nice i'm a man of few words apparently so that is not that is not the case all of the time i had to say that no and hence why i needed to get ai to fill in for me (laughs) fair i wonder how much of this episode i'm just going to sneak ai into and see if anyone recognizes Uh, oh you should i that's that's far too much editing i'm not doing that just play it and then just walk away take a piss grab a beer come back why not read my entire review for me i'll be back in about five minutes oh my god i'm just sitting here going i have nothing i don't know because there's no break to let me talk i'm like oh my god and every once in a while i'll program the AI to say savannah do you have any thoughts on this no okay i will continue <laughs> thanks it's not any different than you do now <laughs> yeah but at least you can actually cut me off you can't cut the ai true you're true true going. you're right you're right you're right Although I do have a mute button on my end. 
<laughs> Song number four, Mercy in You. I like the beat. Um, to me, it didn't really feel like a standout track. Um, there's not much in this one that I heard that isn't really in the preceding tracks so far. No, yeah, I, I get that because, uh, again, kind of a spoiler alert, like there are songs that kind of feel very similar in style to this one. Yeah. And then it just came down to my idea of like which one of them I liked more than the others type thing. Yeah. Which obviously had to be done anyways. So you'll find out later where I put this one on my list. Uh, but this one just, maybe this can be a blanket statement for those other songs too, but this one in particular, I just wrote, oh boy, this one feels really 90s. Not that, That's not necessarily bad. Just enough that it made me shoot my, up my eyebrows like, huh. <laughs> okay there i think there's one coming up um that i definitely think like oh this this is pretty indicative of the time um but this one i literally only have one one note and then a note to say that i have nothing else to say um there are some synth sounds in the back that kind of add like a little je ne sais quoi to the song um but aside from that it kind of falls in with the rest of them up until this point uh which definitely just duplicates the last note that i just read so apparently i didn't really have too much or too many thoughts on this one in particular that, that's fine sometimes i i struggle to write notes especially later on to the album when certain songs were starting to feel like a little bit the same it's like oh shit that thing's happening where it's like what else do I say? Yeah, and you're just kind of like, uh, let's just rephrase what I said about the song that sounds like this, I guess. Um, I did mention that this one actually kind of has the same flow as Walking in My Shoes. It doesn't necessarily sound the same, like it's too similar, but it like had the same kind of flow to it. Yeah. Uh, and But the chorus feels a lot more atmospheric in this one, so it kind of caught me a lot more, felt a lot more immersive, so I did enjoy mm -hmm. that much about it. Is that je ne sais quoi? Is I don't what does that even mean? Like I'm I'm awful with French and I've never looked at the meaning of je ne sais quoi. Um, I actually had to look it up to know how to spell it. Um, but uh, the dictionary says a quality that cannot be described or named easily. Interesting. <laughs> I probably used that wrong multiple times. Then. <laughs> Maybe. But it's not my fault. I didn't read the French fucking language, did I? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, French is our fourth language. Ugh. We said as Canadians. <laughs> <laughs> I can read it. I just can't speak it. I speak English. I speak idiot. I don't speak at all. And then I speak French. So it's, it's the fourth in my order of things. Nice. Nice. Um, but yeah, I did note that this song starts to feel a little too flat before too yeah. long. Nothing really happened to give it much more life. So not enough of it caught on to me. It doesn't necessarily sound bad, but just nothing about it really stood out and like said, hey, Chris, come here for a minute. Yes, like, I agree. That. I definitely agree. When you said don't touch, it literally didn't touch. It's like, hey, I, I, was, I was just kidding. You know, I'm just being playful. <laughs> I don't know where I'm going with that. Neither do I. <laughs> But I'm going to stay silent, expect you to respond next time I do something like that. And I'm just going to introduce the next song. I, I think over the course of the last seven to eight days, I maybe only have gotten like 25 hours of sleep. Oh, God. So maybe it's showing a little bit. Uh-oh. And and I'm drinking. So this episode I is... I am also drinking. We're going to get loopy. Oh, I'm I'm already there. Oh, my God. Although loopy, loopy at our age is just like a drink and a half and you're like oh i'm ready for bed now good night looping at our age is people wondering if the dementia is finally kicking in. <laughs> oh my god oh my god i actually think that might run in my family i don't know if it's like hereditary but i bet i'll get it oh it does run in my family like <laughs> on the upper like older generation yeah so, oh yeah uh, i'm gonna start having to get that checked out soon Yep. Yeah. It's like it's like it's it's like on my mom's side, but she's not showing signs of it. So I'm like hoping yeah. that, that's hopeful. Oh, there you go. But that like, is 100 percent my story as well. <laughs> but can I really be too afraid if my brain just disappears? I won't even know that I'm scared. <laughs> that's kind of a dark joke. Living in my own world. Just oh, static god. noise and f like featureless faces in my brain. Oh my god, that Anyways, is terrifying. Let's just, move on, please. Let's the ex existential horror of uh, life out of the way. Song number five, <laughs> a guy who betrayed another human. There's some dark human shit for you. Judas, assuming you believe in the story of Jesus. Uh, I don't know the story. I just know the Fozzie song, Judas. Um, oh, Judas betrayed this, Jesus, and that's why Jesus was crucified. Uh, yeah, that, that's the main thing behind uh, it. So Jesus no, it has really nothing to do with Chris Jericho. 
<laughs> that's literally the only the only song named Judas that I know. Um, well, Lady Gaga, and, she has one called Judas, doesn't she? Oh yeah, yeah. But I don't know the words to that one. But I was forced to learn the uh, the Fozzy one. Um, when this when this song started, I was like, oh, this sounds like bagpipes. <laughs> interesting i don't know it's probably just synth programming or whatnot definitely not bagpipes yeah well it kind of had like a sort of i don't know sit suspended yeah (laughs) we i do i do do the italian chef hand je ne sais quoi we mon frere um yeah i i don't know it's uh i okay I did not like this song. I'm just going to straight up say that right now. It is not my number one. Spoiler. Oh, it's your number uh, two, though. Okay, gotcha. Well, I, my, I my sec- question mark next to it. <laughs> my second. Oh, my God. Okay, I'm just. Do you mind if I just read my train, like my stream of consciousness through this song? I didn't plan on cutting you off, so. <laughs> Good. Well, I mean, this time. Um, sounds like bagpipes starting this one off interesting no offense but how uninspired was this album it feels like a lull in creativity i'm sure it's not the worst song but it's not even close to the best perhaps it's the lack of chorus that just makes this song feel scattered and not cohesive at all the song really ends with a hard cut at about three minutes 45 but then the last minute is a hat last minute and a half is this outro that really didn't add much to anything at all the the drums sound like garbage cans which make me think of the blue man group what if depeche mode is the blue man group and scene but like garbage can't like industrial sound i mean that's yeah. kind of part of the sounds of yeah. course you probably heard something like that but i was imagining like the blue man group hitting these big uh barrels with all these like fluorescent liquids flying off it well, so then, that's where that's where my mind was didn't, didn't, the lead, d- didn't the lead singer battle with alcohol for way too long and had like several health issues so i doubt he's part of the blue man group and heroin oh look at that so he 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 was not able to stand perfectly still and syncopated with other people doing like a very complex drum routine. But to be fair, there are during this album, there were four members of Depeche Mode. There's only three active guys like on stage of the blue man group. So Dave Gahan could have just been in, in the back doing whatever he does. And then the other ones are, or maybe he's not even aware that they are the or, blue man group. <laughs> they just didn't tell. It's like, so are we going on tour? It's like, Oh no, we, uh, we, uh, we can't. It's like oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry, we we're we're all we're all booked up with stuff. <laughs> I'm gonna go do some David Bowie karaoke. Just let me know when you're ready to tour. Oh my god! Oh my god! Well, that was my review of this song. It was not the best, but that was all of it. So <laughs> I hope yours is better. I mean, you called it an uninspired album. Like, it okay, let's like hear it. You, you inspired bag of farts. I mean, like we're five <laughs> songs in, it's not that bad. Hey, they're Brussels sprouts. Brussels sprout farts. So. Sorry. Those are extra stinky, and I like Brussels sprouts, yes. though. Yes, so do I, and that's how I know. All right, then. Well, I can keep talking about you being fart. No, or I can give talk me a review. Genius. Yes. Uh, I thought it was a very atmospheric start to the track. No bagpipes included. So, I mean, like, it was a, it was a kind of a nice start up to the song, I thought, so that it was good. I do like the soft feeling beat in this track. So it's just, it's again, it's kind of another one of those come down type things. I liked it. And that paired with the instrumentals that kind of bring these feelings of, of like peace, but and tension. Uh, hold on. <coughs> there we go. Oh, no fart, but you get the burp at the very least. That was the first one. There well, be because I, I could have muted myself. I'm like, I'm not doing that anymore. I don't care. Yeah, it's our <laughs> show. I'm talking about feelings of peace and tension, and then I belch. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, the instrumentals felt very peaceful, but there was also like just parts of it that kind of felt tense too, like it was building on something. So I thought that was cool. Great combination. And like, there's a slight change up in the last quarter of the track that was really cool. And it kind of gives like a darker feeling to the track. And it was it kind of already still rem- I mean, it remains similar. It's like sounding similar. It just feels a little darker. So I kind of like the direction it started to go in. Uh, it's also not my number one favorite, but I clearly did. I like this more than you did. Oh, way more. You could have been like, yeah, it was good. And then it would have been better than my review. Um, yeah, but I need to make you look bad. So I need to like, actually say words. There was like no AI chorus. <laughs> there was no like hook to it. It's like I you need to have a chorus or a hook. I could, I, I could 
even tell you what it sounds like. It, would you have that complaint about an instrumental song? Shut Probably. up, exactly. <laughs> Probably. It doesn't have a chorus. It doesn't have a hook. It's like, yeah, yeah. but sometimes there's you like... the prog rock, for Christ's sake, and you heard like 20-minute jam sessions. Exactly. Yeah, but I take, each little, I take each little section like its own song. Well, this is one whole ass long section that just sounds really cool. It's like two sections, actually. Okay, I'm going to agree to disagree. I'm going to keep but battling right. with you on this. No. It's, it's so funny how I'm willing to get into a heated debate about a song that's not even my number one. Yeah, you're like, fuck it, I uh, spoiler alert, It's like I guess, number but... six. It's like number six, what else? Do you want? Do you want to make that declaration now? Number six. I'll write that no, down. No, no, not even. I don't even know which one would be your number one. This one is just. It is a mixed bag of I don't know. Well then, uh, then I guess we'll just step off that one and uh, we'll go in your yeah. room. Or we're not going to go in your room. Song number six in your room. You're yeah, already in my we're, room. We're technically kind of there, and you, you invited everyone else with you. Hello, we're all here. Exactly. Now entertain us. Look! Look at how bland. My background is, and my Megadeth poster. Anyway, but a slate gray is your soul. Anyway, <laughs> am I wrong? I was going to say you want to say that again, but you really doubled down, so I got nothing. I have absolutely <laughs> nothing. Um, I enjoy how much depth the bass and drums give this song. I know I said that before, but it's still valid here. Um, Although I do feel like the lyrics are fairly repetitive, the music really keeps my attention. And I, I don't, if like you mentioned the uh, first track being uh, in three, four time, or at least a part of it that you noticed. Um, I'm not sure if this one is because I, for the entire album, I didn't notice at all. I just noticed that the vocals sort of started to sound disjointed from the music, but it evens out like as the song goes on. So when it started, I felt sort of uneasy because it wasn't as smooth as what I, you know, other songs that I've heard ever. Um, but it felt comfortable as I'm listening to it. Also, didn't realize this song was like over six minutes. I thought that they were all like, not quite past five and a half. Uh, so when you said one was like over six, I was like, yeah, okay. Uh, for some reason, I did not notice. It didn't feel like it. This one is the one that actually felt like it to me. Really? <laughs> really, really? Just kind of going back for a minute too, when you said like you felt uneasy because like things were like quite lining up with the vocals and everything like that. Yeah. I wonder how you do with like a very crazy polyrhythmic song where things are just kind of overlapping each other like crazy. And then they finally meet up in the end. I, I need to, we need to do a Meshuggah album. I think that it, will just drive you insane. It depends how much weed I've had. Uh, Meshuggah is very heavy. So I don't know how much weed you want to smoke. It's it, it might not be the best trip. Interesting. Interesting. is super good though. I fucking love them, but we're not talking about Meshuggah. We're talking about Depeche Mode, douchebag mode. We? I, I tried, okay. That was terrible! <laughs> yeah, it was. was cause I haven't really had any good jokes today, so I had to say something stupid to get a reaction out of you. Well, there there it is. There it is. What else did you think about in your room? I like synth from it bass. Being too long. Yeah? Next song? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, then then I'm gonna gonna elaborate on my one no no you bass. won't because i actually do have points to talk about well then there you go keep going i like the synth bass that starts in the tra <laughs> starts the track bouncing back and forth between the speakers i do like that they kind of did that in the first song i like it again here again it doesn't feel like uh too abrasive or anything like that it's a good dark atmosphere to the song and uh i i actually like how it took like a little while for the drums to actually kick in mm -hmm. like it felt like a, kind of like a unique track uh as compared to others that have been on the album before that but like uh, they eventually do kick in, but the one thing I do like is like the drum change up in the second half of the song. I thought it was pretty cool. I like how like fuller and wider it sounds. It goes from like feeling like a digital industrial thing to like more of an 80s sounding drum, I guess is the best way to describe it. So yeah. I don't know. I, I do like that change up though. It kind of, it, it took me by surprise a little bit, but I enjoyed it. All right. We're going to circle back to my bass thing, seeing how you just wouldn't let me talk. Um, when the bass really kicks in at about like two minutes or so, that's when I really started to get on board because at the beginning I was like, eh, okay. And then the bass kicks in, drums kick in. I'm like, sweet, this is awesome. Um, I like the space that this song fills with like synths and harmonizing vocalizations. And there are some songs on this entire album that 
you can hear them, but they don't feel substantial or they don't feel important. But with this one, it it really felt like it filled the space. And I really like that. Um, and it feels like it's, it has more to offer than some of the other ones, especially on <clears throat> Judas. Um, and uh, it, it really gives me like singing to the sky in the desert out of desperation vibes where you're there alone, you're just singing to the sky and you're like, this is my last hope. Please help me. I, I need you sort you of that, feeling. Do you think that this could potentially be a concept album? I'm starting to feel that because I, oh wait, are you fucking fucking with me here? You literally mentioned it earlier. So yeah, I'm just kind of circling right? back to that. I was going to say, I'm like, wait, do you know it is? And you're just being a smart ass or because I, I wouldn't doubt it. I mean, I didn't like read about the album, um, but uh, I definitely feel like it. I, I imagine just sort of what I know about the band that uh, the singer Dave Gahan, he was definitely in the the throes of, you know, heroin addiction. And I, I definitely know that he's clinically died at least once, could have been twice, could have been more than that. But I feel like this could have been one of those, like, I've hit rock bottom, please help me in a way where it's like, I I know I need help but I'm not willing to seek it out, but I need it kind of thing. I don't know. It's uh, when, when you think of it that way, I feel like it kind of puts a different spin on what you're listening to. Yeah. And actually uh, when, when Andy Fletcher died uh, back in last year, uh, yeah. I, I honestly, for when I first heard it, I thought it was Dave Gahan who died. And I was just like, Ooh, that feels some for some reason it feels surprising. The surprising yeah. part that wasn't him. It's surprising. Not, not he's that still I want alive. him to. Like, yeah, I was say I, I'm not trying to be mean about it. Or <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just like because of all the problems he's had, and yes, he's clinically died before. Yeah. Uh, like I would have been like, oh shit, so it actually happened. But no, then it was like the fucking like like keyboard. So I was like, oh shit, that's weird. Didn't yeah, and it was just like coming. a. What did I read? It was a aortic dissection. You or heard something? my AI say that earlier. Yes. Oh, did I? Well, I I read about it when he died too. <laughs> oh yeah. But like, course. but like that's shitty. I think he was like only sixty or something. But ugh. yeah, unfortunately, a little too young. When I mean, I think Dave's clean now anyway. So if there's that, yeah. yeah and yeah. they're actually on tour right now. I was I was gonna buy tickets, but guess what? They're fucking stupid expensive. They just had a new album come out and I forget what it's called. <laughs> like Ma, 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 Memento Mori. Maybe? Memento Mori, which was the name yeah, of the yeah. last song in the Will Wood album that we did last week. There's your call. Yeah. Ooh, interesting. interesting how that happened. Like uh, so the only other note I have is actually one of my bigger criticisms of the song. Um, so the final chorus feels like really anticlimactic to me. Uh, it doesn't really build well into the outro at all. Like usually the final chorus is set to be like a little bigger, kind of like give you that finale type feeling. This one didn't do it, and it doesn't really do a good job of doing that at all in this album, but I really noticed on this particular song. Mm -hmm. uh, so it feels like really incomplete, and it also made the song feel just a little bit too long. There's my comment on yeah. it being too long. Yeah. It just drags for a while. Like, if you were doing more with it, then I could probably, like, dig it. Like, I, I could dig a long outro, no big deal, but yeah, there was nothing that really led into it properly. It just felt like it kind of bled out slowly. I mean... What can I say? It just it not, there wasn't a lot for me to grab onto. Did it feel uninspired? Uh, not uninspired. I know what you're trying to get me to say here. Uh, I just want you to agree with me. That's all. Oh, I still don't. Ah. It's just that this could have gone into a different direction. Because like there was other parts of the song that I really like, so there's definitely some inspiration in there. Yeah. Fair. Uh, unfortunately, I have nothing else other than I like this one finally um i'm starting to feel like this might be a uh a b-sides better than a-sides thing for me so uh let me look at my list real quick to see if i agree with you uh it's actually kind of a mixed bag well this is what track six so i would assume if it's on vinyl it'd be the beginning of the next maybe beginning of the next side so well yeah half half makes sense yeah uh, so let's continue on with the B-side then. So track number seven, Gut Right With Me. Get right with, not gut. I need my AI to fill in for me here. I can't speak anymore. <sighs> okay, so I just don't have one point I just want to start out with, start off with, and then, then you can get on yours. Um, I'm going to say it now. The song is good. I don't mind the industrial additions. 
with the exception of the record scratch, it really sounds out of place, (laughs) but thank goodness it was buried for the rest of the song because like hearing something like, okay, I don't know how to describe it other than there are like three different sort of record scratchy industrial sounds, but that record scratch on everything, it just, it seemed so fake and so not necessary and it was annoying. And I, I really only heard it twice at the beginning because during the rest of the song, it's not really as, I don't, I don't know, uh, just, just fake. It sounded so fake and I hated it. Welcome but to the nineties. Oh my God. I know. I thought of that. I was like, holy shit. This was like early nineties, you know, hip hop record scratch. Everything's cool. Yeah. Hip, no. hip hop had kind of a boom back. and then like rock music was kind of climbing back because of grunge. Yeah. So like there was, this was like in like industrial never caught actually industrial wouldn't catch on until the next year. 94 dropped the downward spiral by nine inch nails and that put industrial music on the map. Yeah. Uh, so this album was a very weird cross section of like your, your, your kind of like synth pop stuff, rock music. I don't, mm-hmm. you can't sort of really say hip hop, but they were experimental yeah. in that way at the very least. Yeah. I didn't like the record scratch, but the rest of the sort of little additions and everything, those were okay. But just like that, I, I, I can't even recreate it with my vocals to really get it there. But so, uh, I hated that. I know exactly what you're talking about. I just, I yeah. don't remember it too much either. So I wouldn't be able to do it either. Yeah, Wait, it on. just it sound it didn't sound like it blended in. It was just it was literally <laughs> slapped. Oh my fucking god! I said hold on, just... then you kept talking anyway. So <laughs> there you go. Yeah, what else? Um, it was just slapped on top. It it was it wasn't. Oh, it just it was. It, I didn't like it. I didn't like it. <clears throat> no, I I get that because actually my first note verbatim. Yeah. The industrial drum sounds are cool, but I didn't see the use of a record scratch being a thing on this record. Yeah, didn't necessarily hate it, but yeah, I, I did think to myself mm-hmm. like, now did they do that because this was the '90s and the '90s were cool and hip? Yes, more than likely. And yeah. this is a band who's already been around for 13 years at this point in time, so like they're just like. Might as well get cool with the kids because Getty Lee just rapped two years ago. So why don't we add retro record scratching to our fucking music? Now we're going to add roll the bones up to the little card. Up oh, there. You, I, that's pretty much why I threw that one. Aye, in. So aye, we, aye. You see, yeah. audience, this is called callbacks in which we can use cards to get people to watch older episodes like you. Oh, my God. Getty Lee <laughs> rapping. Holy fucking. I forgot. Like, I like it. I think maybe in an ironic way. Um, I don't think anyone uh, likes it in a genuine way. So I think ironic is the only way you could like it. Okay, good. That I'm with everyone else. Perfect. I I don't like it anyway. I just not need it. Anyways, you can hear my you can hear me rant about that back in episode thirteen. I think it's episode thirteen. Regardless, go look, go listen to that after you're done listening to this. Anyways, um, so yeah, record scratch aside, uh, cool industrial sounds. Uh, the song has like a lot of layers from like gradually added to it, and I kind of noted that a few times listening through it. So it feels like the song kind of get gets richer as it goes. Not that it gets way more full and like the the layers stick around. Like some will fade out, some will kind of come in. So, but there's always something new going on. So I do kind of like that. Uh, the choir section in the middle is a really nice addition. It really feels grand and warm, kind of like Judas did to me. I think no, was it Judas? The one that had like the the gospel type feeling to it. I mentioned a few mm-hmm. songs ago. I think that was it. So it kind of reminded me of that, and I did like that for that reason. Um, not super fond of the fake out ending though. Yeah. Uh, like the song ends, it was like three. This song's three minutes and fifty one seconds. The fake out comes at like three minutes, and I was just like, yep. and I looked at the, the like I hear it fade out, and I'm just like, I looked at my the bar of the time there. I was just like, I was like. <laughs> It's like, I'm not going to get like a fucking Chinese restaurant sketch. Am I? There you oh go. There's another God. callback for you to the Fugees. Oh my God. Um, Like, I was like, we're not going to get some bullshit, are we? But then it, it kind of like, it felt like its own little like weird interlude type thing that kind of still represented uh, the song Get, get Right With Me. I, I didn't dislike it. it. It's kind of its like own strange little extension. Just don't know why it needed to have the whole fake out thing. You could have found a way to blend it better. Okay, so uh, the rest of my notes for this song uh, just mimic yours, except for, I think, maybe two. Um, now, I I do really like the guitar tone that's sort of, I, I don't really know what else to call it other than like a little Middle Eastern vibe or something. I don't know what, what pedal they're using for the guitar, but either way, I liked it. It was great. Um, now... This one gives me like a televangelist feeling with the choir background vocals. And 
I did, I, like you, I did not enjoy how just like Judas, the main song ended and then a vocalist minute comes back in and ends the song proper. Why? I did not care for that. But the end of the song kind of feels like desolate and like perhaps you're caught in a storm because you kind of hear like the the thundering and stuff like that. So I figure, you know, it's maybe a... I don't know, maybe like a loneliness kind of feeling. That's kind of what I got from it. Uh, but all in all, uh, one and a half thumbs up. I liked it. I wonder what that'll equate to out of 10 when we actually get to the ranking of the songs. <laughs> that, that is what it is out of 10. Silly, that's not a real number. That's a cough sound. It is. It <laughs> definitely is. Thank you, Captain Humphreys. Thank you. Oh, you're not a captain. You're um, I'm a seaman. There you go. That's that goes with the sixty nine joke from last week. But that's actually a real ranking. That's like like cadet. <laughs> Could we rush the rest of this album, please? I was gonna make some sort of thing about Rush because it's like here's the song right here. Oh my god! Yes. Song number eight, uh, Rush. We did roll the bones. We did twenty one twelve. Uh, one was better Rush. than the other, but this is not one of those things. So let's see where this ends up on our list of things. Rush, you first. You first, please. Um, okay, sure. I, I mean, so uh, 2112 is a fantastic album. You'll notice it's at the top. Oh, okay, the song. Uh, test, I, <laughs> test for Echo is the best uh, Rush album at me. I dare you to. It wouldn't top our charts, though. It wouldn't top anybody's charts. It's not enough. But awful, mine, though. I like that it, album. To me, it's a, to me, it's a high B tier for sure. Oh, That's without, I, without reviewing it, I'm just saying that out loud. <laughs> I like it minus Dog Gears for some reason. I fucking hate that song, but it's just me. Uh, I, I think you're going to say, I like it minus Virtuality. I'm like, smart ass. <laughs> what a shitty song. Uh, well, there's another callback. My, I love, <laughs> go check out my I love this song because I fucking love that song. <laughs> oh, we are whores for our own content. All right. Well, I do like the contrast of like the hard and sharp synth bass and drums on top of like the very airy guitar kind of going through the background. I thought it gives the, the track a lot of depth. So that's like a lot of fun to listen to. I like these like differences in textures. Very interesting. Uh, I like the super chill middle of the song too. I love that. The droning synth and like the slow drum beat. It's great. Uh, I like the, like the little noisy little uh, layers kind of sprinkled all through it. It makes it a really fun listen. So there's actually a lot I'm enjoying about this song. Yeah. This. This song is what I thought the entire album might sound like. I hate that I had to wait through seven other tracks to get to As this As if they one. were all that bad. But I like this one. Because um, it's called I'm, Rush. Haha, <laughs> I get it anyway. Did I interrupt you more than once? Probably. Um, I am happy to oh, I'm be sorry, here. did I interrupt you? Nonetheless, um, I really like the main riff. Uh, if it was an instrumental, I can definitely see it being a character select screen on an N64. So cool. Like during like a wrestling game, maybe? That was the only thing I was thinking of. Like literally. No my, mercy. My, <laughs> my entire brain is just music, food, and prov I, I've introduced myself and said like, I, I am interested in three things, music, cooking, and professional wrestling. That's like, that is my whole personality. But as the song, the song slows down, it sort of has like this sirenish sort of sound. I don't know if it's just like a wailing guitar or something, but it reminds me of the closing of uh, Radiohead's Karma Police, where it kind of has that like sireny, squealy uh. guitar. I did listen to them back to back and they're kind of similar enough to sort of bring that, that thought out. But uh, my last point just says, yay. So. I, I yay. can see, I can see Tom York being influenced by uh, the patch mode at some point. More than likely. Probably happened. Yeah. Yeah. When did uh, Pablo honey come out? 93, 92, 93, something like that. I know nothing about Radiohead other than the album that we did that came out in 97. And the one we gave away back in January, yay. I, I hope you're enjoying that album, Thomas. Yeah, you better. Haven't heard anything, so hopefully you're having a good time with it. Anyways, that's that. Um, yeah, so the only other note that I really have for this one at the end now is just, again, the chorus kind of felt like a little underwhelming. Yeah. Uh, it's too bad because I like what the song was doing. It's just too bad that like they just, again, not uninspired, but just... <laughs> I don't know. They have this problem with a, with being able to do a proper ending or at least like doing a little more with the final course to like 
pop the ending out a little more. So yeah, I don't know. It's just too bad about that. But other than that, I do like the song. Fair, as did I, for once. Good, good. Uh, then we agree that it's a good song. That'll be number one. No, it won't, it won't be number one. Might be. Oh, will it? Uh, so we got two more songs now. I guess we'll just uh, kind of uh, rush through this. Song number nine, uh, One Caress. And for some reason, when I was like listening to the song, I kept thinking of just Last Caress by, what is it, The Misfits, I think it Misfits. is? Misfits, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I, was, I was thinking uh, about that. And it's definitely not the same thing. Not even close. <laughs> Uh, do you know what I was thinking when I was listening to the song, which actually is kind of close. When I started listening to the song, I was like, is this never tear us apart by in excess? Cause I, I listened to those back to back. I was like, eh, it's different enough, but it kind of gives me the same vibes. Um, this song really fucking pumped the brakes from rush. Like that was just the, a little more energetic. And this one was just like, loungy relaxy and i was like oh the the um juxtaposition of those two really sort of cut off any of the energy that it was giving me and I, i'll say a note that kind of encompasses uh the last two songs is the end of the album because it kind of cut that energy off from the, uh, the rush track um i don't know it, i feel like this these two songs were like a weird way to end the album because usually if you want to have a quieter song, that's fine. Maybe make it the very last one or at least have the last song be a little more energetic. I can tell just by your smile that we're going to get to that. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. It, it's it's a little weird, a bit of a weird way to end the album, but uh, I'll talk about that more when we get to the next song. Uh, I said that this song feels like it was like ripped straight from a musical. Yeah. Uh, because like, it's just like menacing strings and like a pretty impressive vocal performance. So, I mean, like I could just see him like be on a stage with like weird backgrounds of like a musical. And he's like just walking back and forth on stage as if he's like singing the dialogue type thing. It just... I don't know. Uh, and there was also times when like the strings seemed like a little louder than the vocals. Like, and, yes. I, get, and I get there's probably a voice yes. of emphasizing emotion. Like I get that part of it, but sometimes it's just a little too distracting. So it kind of loses that point. Yes. Um, I definitely agree with the whole last at like uh, last songs in the album thing. Um, I wrote that it might have been better earlier in the album because I can see it sort of breaking up two faster songs. And then in parentheses, I put if there were any. And then uh, I, I said that even placing it as the album ender would have been a better idea. Um, this one's not my favorite. It definitely feels like a filler track. It doesn't really feel like it was written for the album. It was just written and then put on the album. Um, and I felt that the lyrics sort of give me a, if you sleep with me, all my ailments will be healed kind of vibe. And it just didn't, it didn't jive with me at all. It, it, it's it's like if your, your partner's real sad and you're like, oh, like it's, it's, if there's anything I can do for you, just, just let me know. It's like, well, I mean, just one I, last I, caress. Like, I mean, a little head may, may, may feel pretty right? good, you know. I'm like, like, oh, like I can, I make, make you a good meal or something. Like, no, no. I mean, maybe, maybe yeah. a little head. And then you're just slowly <laughs> pulling your pants off. I'm just like, come on, just, like that's touch that's, it, please. Just, just like, just touch it, just touch oh it. Oh my god, that is totally what I got from this song. And I don't, I oh, sad boy. Again, <laughs> we we don't look into the lyrics. No, no. But just. The the saying like oh girl and one last ca and one caress I'm like just <laughs> fucking what seriously just caress what? it one just one caress oh that's my it God. <laughs> that was the imagery I got and I was like no thank you I'd like to I would like to book I would like to check out of this room please no thank you I'm out and tell you what I I just I I left you like a dime bag over there just go smoke <laughs> a little bit and you'll feel better okay there's your therapy <laughs> hey whatever <laughs> I mean if it makes you numb then you don't really want anything so it's fine. Do people still buy dime bags considering pot's legal now? Because like back in the day when it wasn't so legal, like dime bags were like the thing that everyone bought because they were just tiny enough to for like one little go. Um, I never, I don't know. I, I started smoking weed when I was older. Um, and uh, dime bags just make me think of cocaine, which I've never done. So, oh, see, I think of eight ball when I think of cocaine. Oh, all of this slang. I'm not hip with the jav and the drug lingo and such. Yeah, although sometimes walking in, <laughs> although sometimes walking into a dispensary now makes me feel weird. So, I've never been in a dispensary. I just ordered off the uh, the uh, the o o OCS site. Oh yeah, I uh, I, I, for I, me. I do stuff, but uh, this is not the place to discuss. 
And I was going to say, too, statutes of limitation. So, uh, yeah, I smoked while I was underage. What are you going to do? Sue yeah. me? <laughs> um, I, I don't know if I've ever shared uh, the story of when I got high for the very first time, but I was 19. So it was it was fine. Um, my uh, my partner at the time was a chronic smoker, but he worked out of town. So he was gone for two weeks at a time. But he left like half a half a joint in the ashtray because we both smoked cigarettes at the time. So I lived close enough to my job that I would always drive home for lunch. So I was like, I'm going to try some of this. I'm like, I'll see, you know, I don't know how this is going to go. Never smoked weed my whole life ever. Took a couple puffs off this half joint and I drove back to work. Oh my God. It felt like I was looking through fucking pinholes, everything like tunnel vision and everything. I kept dropping stuff going. I don't know why I keep dropping things like this is messed up. And uh, yeah, I just, it was a trip. So I think the, the first scary... time I ever got high, I went to work. <laughs> I think the scary part is that you drove while you were high. Holy shit. Well, no, no, it, it hadn't kicked in yet. It kicked in while I was at work. Oof. But I it wasn't one of those like, oh, I can go hide. I was the cashier at a gas station. <laughs> Ooh. Well, people expect them to be drunk or high anyway. <laughs> Oh my God. It was, it Especially was depending on the gas wild. station. <laughs> it was a wild time, but, um, I bet. but yeah, yeah. I don't know. I, I look back on it fondly as a, wow, you were stupid. And maybe <laughs> that was the beginning of stunting your brain. Cause I'm not a big drinker, but, uh, I can imagine something ain't right up there. I could say the same thing for me too. Cause I first smoked <laughs> when I was 13, a long time ago, I was a wee little boy. Hey. Weed little boy, how huh? funny. <laughs> okay, so we can wrap this up now with the final song that I I was so terrified was a cover. Thankfully, it's not that song. Song number 10, Higher Love. I do not <laughs> like that song. I My really. first couple notes. I was really expecting a Steve Winwood cover, and I put, this is not a Steve Winwood cover. I would have been fine with it. I actually like that song. <laughs> Steve Winwood was in traffic, was he not? I don't know. I just know that uh, in GTA 5, he is a radio station host and plays a lot of his own songs. Uh, d- and he also wrote the song Valerie, didn't he? Is that yes, him? Yes, I like I, that I, I like that song, but like yeah. Higher Love is trash, trash tier song. <laughs> I was hoping it was a cover, but it's not. It's not oh, I would have tanked it. I don't even care. <laughs> tanked with a capital A. All right, so Higher Love, uh, thankfully, it's wiping the sweat off my brow was not a cover. Uh, it feels like this one also feeling reminiscent of the other tracks, though. Uh, but it has like a... What the hell does that mean? See, now I'm having that moment. Right? But with the mix of soft songs and... Sh- oh, okay, yeah, yeah. Okay, gotcha. Sorry, I was just misreading it. So um, I, I do think that this rem- uh, is reminiscent of the other tracks, but because of the mix of soft songs on the album and like the shorter track list all together, it's not bothering yeah. me too much since we're at the end of the record now. If we had like three or four more songs and maybe it'd be like, oh man, we got like probably at least one more of these coming up. Yeah. But it didn't really bother me all that much, uh, but it is still worth noting. It's like, hey kind of feels like this one and this one um the beginning it just really wasn't getting me at all until the music really started to kick in and i was like okay i can get on board with this like this song didn't bother me at all it was totally fine like the length whatever that was fine um this is when i realized like obviously it's the last song in the album but i realized like i definitely like the b-side better than the a-side my scores, they're not spoiled at all. They're all pretty close, but just audibly, I would prefer to replay uh, more songs that were later in the album. Um, but I just like the last song. I I don't think that this song should be the last song. I think this would have been better somewhere else. Um, but I see where they were trying to go with the other songs. Um, but with tracks like this one and with Rush, I kind of wanted more of that sort of vibe that sort of sound as an entire album not just a one or two off track like little uh little gems in the sand you know i wanted a entire mountain of gems i didn't want to have to go digging for them and having them play so far at the the end of the album it, it kind of I don't, I don't know. I don't want to call it a payoff because it's like, oh, I, I went, listened to all of this and now I got to ones that I liked. It it kind of felt, I don't, I don't 
know. I don't want to call it a payoff, but I also don't want to call it a waste of time. I don't really know how to describe it, but if you if you kind of feel in my, my vibe, that's really what I'm trying to say. I would refer to it as a filler. It maybe the the other eight songs kind of felt like a filler. Well, th- this felt like, that I like this felt like a filler because yeah, I only say that because like again, just like you said, we kind of already hinted at this doesn't feel like an ender. No, um, it doesn't. Because this again, because it feels so similar to other tracks, like maybe if it ended differently and kind of like did something a little special, then maybe it would be. But yeah, I don't know. Nothing really said ender. T- uh, in kind of looking at the track list, I'm just looking at my list here. Uh, I can't even think of what I'd want at the end anyway. Like. <laughs> I don't know. I maybe even one caress. Maybe just end it on a quiet note. I don't know. Yeah. But because it, it was so different too, since it was just like you know orchestral strings type thing and just singing, and that was it. So like maybe it just kind of make that your weird ender. This yeah. one didn't really work. Um, it, I, if if one caress was more energetic, then maybe this one would have had it. But because you had like two kind of quieter tracks in a row, yeah. uh, it just felt like a lull at the end of the album. It sounds all right, but it's yeah, just not an exciting way to end the album I, I i don't have anything else for higher love but i definitely mentioned that in one caress that i think it would have sounded better earlier in the album between two faster songs or just straight up at the end but higher love i don't think uh should have been last it, it felt like we were closing out the album and then we were bringing it back up just to shut the listener down and be like no we're actually done it's kind of like what <laughs> like like there, there's no there's no sort of resolution. It's kind of like a beginning of rising action again. And then you're just like, oh, we're we're done now. This kind of sucky. Boo. Boo. Uh, it's okay. I mean, like, I don't, I don't know how much more this album could have gone on and done other interesting things with. If this album yeah. was longer, I think it would have suffered more. But yeah. being 10 songs, I, I don't mind. It's fine. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I was going to make a, make a pun on another Depeche Mode song, but it's not on this album, so... So take that. <laughs> yeah, I was. That's actually a band. Uh, we're not talking about take that. We're talking about Depeche Mode. Come on, get your shit together. Well, we I was gonna make a joke about suffer well, but yes, we're not even really talking about Depeche Mode anymore, anyways, because that is the end of oh! the album. Only oh got all ten tracks. There they are. Uh, we're not doing any of the bonus tracks or whatever from. No, the, oh my uh, God, there are so edition. many. Well, no, those are also like a lot of mixes, but one of them I think is yeah. an actual bonus track. But you know the rules. We don't usually do that on this show as much as I've wanted to do it for Animals Leaders in the past. Original what CD, original vinyl, original whatever was on it when it came out the first time original wax cylinder that's it <laughs> so, going way too far back in time anyways yes we are at the end of the album so hey thank you very much for making it this far if you have indeed did that not just skipped all the way through for shame go back and watch the entire thing uh, it was yes. worth it uh, only the audio listeners will know that you meant that <laughs> oh yeah 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 i meant that although i was shaking my head uh no uh, I need more AI so I can make you shake your head yes instead. <laughs> oh my god, deep, please don't deep fake my face. Oh boy. I, I ha- we already have 70 episodes. I can deep fake your face off many different looks, including with your glasses. Oh, fuck. <laughs> A different hairstyle, different lengths, everything. Ah. Anyways, yeah, yeah, this is the yeah. end of the al- uh, album, yes, and not quite the end of the episode yet, but hey, thank you for making it this far. If you have, make sure you let us uh, know down in the comments below, wherever you're listening, because there's comment sections everywhere, of what you think of today's album, uh, getting listening to it front to back. How did you feel about it? What did you think about things? Let us know, but you can also let us know more things, including song rankings and album ratings, because we're going to get into that now, part two of three of the podcast. We're going to rank songs. So I guess without rambling too much above our heads, boom, graphics have changed. There are names. There are numbers. There's going to be more names, specifically song names, because that's the part we do now. Songs from worst to best, least favorite to favorite, uh, not so coolest to coolest, whatever you want to look at it as, regardless, that's what we're doing. Ten to one. Yeah. <laughs> I literally have all X's. I don't think we're going to get any matches. The first time I've ever had not even a question mark. It's all X's. <clears throat> okay. So if any of the other 69 episodes um, have shown me anything, uh, <laughs> I just clued in what you said. That was funny. I am immature. Um, but uh, every time you say you're like, Oh, I don't think we're going to get any matches. It's immediately after that, that we get a match. So I'm going to go ahead. And even though we have only 10 songs, I'm going to say one. We're going to get one. I don't know. From the way we were each describing songs, it doesn't sound like any one of them like crossed over too well. So 
but we have been incorrect before where you're like, oh, Sven, you were talking so highly of it and you ranked it so shittily or vice versa. So could be the case. Supposing so. Mm-hmm. You 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 literally here here's another card above our heads for pitch shifter. If we even have card room left on YouTube uh for the <laughs> pitch shifter not. episode, you the your number one song was literally the uh the options menu music on Twisted Metal 3. Like that was literally your number one. But I never played that game, so I mean yeah, but maybe the, it was a solid banger. Who but knows? it's just funny to me that you pick the options menu music as your number one. Like that that to me is comedic. Hey, you were speaking about WWF No Mercy, and I mean, they got some pretty good bangers on there, too. And if that was on this album, (laughs) that'd probably be not... I have played that game to death. Oh, I love that game so much. I understand how popular it is. I've just never played it. Uh, When I I lived with a bunch of roommates, we... if it was like, oh, who's going to do the dishes today? We would have a uh, a four person battle royal, and whoever won was the only person who didn't have to do dishes that day. And then the other three, they do whatever. But it's a good way we to would, uh, no, exactly. We would do it all the time. It was fantastic. I like barely ever won. It sucked. <laughs> Alrighty then. Well, speaking of wrestling, let's get into the song rankings now. Yes. So, song number ten, "Mercy in You." Judas, Judas. Yes, I figured that was going to be your thing. Yeah, that was not a surprise at all. Uh, number nine, bring me a higher love. One caress. One. I had something to say. Number eight, one, one caress. caress. Uh, number eight, mercy in you. All right, well, so far it's trending my way, but now that I've said that... <laughs> Yeah, uh, right. Number seven in your room. Okay, good. I was really hoping. I feel you. I feel you, homie. Huh? Whatever that means. Anyways, <laughs> still, still very loopy. That was that face you made. I didn't mean that that to be sexual. Now it well, just like <laughs> at the end, I was like, oh. uh, <laughs> girl, just me being dumb and tired. Uh, number six, walking in my shoes. Uh, number six, condemnation. Condemnation. <laughs> That that is how I've been saying it. Yes. Welcome to condemnation. <laughs> Slap on them rubbers, fam. <laughs> Number God. five, Judas. Number five, get right with me. Get wrong with you. Get right with. We me. We literally have one more to match, and it's not going to match. I can already promise you that. Yeah, we Number so four, fun. get right with me. Uh, Number four, walking in my shoes. We got a lot of like close ones, I guess. Yeah. We're not going to get the one I want. Yeah. No, because it's this one. Number three, Rush. Uh, number three, In Your Room. There you go. Yeah, you know where the other two sit. I almost wrote In My Room because I was thinking of the Incubus song In My Room, which I actually really like yeah, that song. Yeah, what off uh, Morning View? We should do that album. I no, really no, no, like no. That. that song was uh, off of uh, Crow Left of the Murder, I think. Oh, fuck. It doesn't matter. I own that one, so we should definitely do that one, too. <laughs> do both of them. Fuck yeah. Number two, Condemnation. Uh, number two, "How You Love," and I am not singing Steve Winwood. Sorry, because I already did, and we're gonna get we're did. gonna get a copyright strike if you do. <laughs> uh, higher love. Uh, number one, I feel you. Rush. We are the priests. Okay, anyways. Of the temples of sea, and we're done, right? I was saying like, something. I was gonna say you already muted me, right? No, I didn't. Right. I actually boosted your volume right then and there. <laughs> Sorry to everybody. Well, just as I predicted, zero because I just I didn't I wasn't feeling it at all. I was being optimistic for once, um, but yeah, it's with only ten. Like I know that when we did the Eagles card up top, too many probably, cards already. This probably time not. Um, we we had a lot of matches for a uh, small, like a very eight, small amount eight or of songs. nine song album. I think it was. It was yeah, it's one of those seventies albums, so it's definitely shorter. So I was hoping that maybe we could pull that off again, but uh, alas, we did not. Oh, well, I mean, th- that's probably not going to happen again for a very, very long time. Yeah. If at all. All right. Well, we got zero to 10, but let's see how close our album ratings are with each other. So I guess we'll take a look at that now. Transition. All right. Here we are on the album ratings screen. You know what it looks like. And you can tell just that giant gaping space that is Things. the beat here. So sorry for my choices. You're not because you keep doing it. I would believe you if this is like the first three episodes, but like, I can't believe you. Because it's funny. <laughs> oh, ha, 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 funny. I have to, I literally have to do more photoshopping to stretch out the tears just to put in more B tier albums. Great. 
Not my problem. <laughs> oh, I will make it your problem. Anyways, we got to find out where in the B tier this album goes, apparently. <laughs> Because we're just so good at B-tiering albums. I, I don't know where it's going to land, but I, I I just always have a feeling now it's going to be B-tier. Yeah. I mean, we could have had Shad a couple weeks ago be our uh, another A-tier, but no, you messed that up. Hey, I did probably. Yeah, I don't oh, remember. No, we it, know yeah. that you did. No, I no, it could have been me. It could have been me. I don't know. Maybe. I actually A-tiered it, so it was you. I know that for a fact. Editor, roll the clip. <laughs> do, 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 do. <laughs> All right. So, anyways, yeah, we got to find out where this album goes. Uh, Depeche Mode's Songs of Faith and Devotion. Is it as good as everyone says it is? Is it not as good as everyone says it is? So, we, let's find out now. Savannah, what's your score? Oh, my God. Well, a little, little preface for my score here. Um, if my review wasn't obvious, this was not what I thought it was going to be. A little more darker, a little more, uh, I don't know, just not as synth heavy as i would have assumed this album would have been although released in 93 i don't know what the fuck i was even expecting at this point um my score um is a fantastic b minus <laughs> at 70.8 wow like eight zero or zero eight eight zero eight zero okay okay yeah, it is. It's actually higher than I thought, because when I was listening to it the first couple times, I was like, oh, my God, this is just not it. But the more I listened to it, the more it was just kind of like you get the vibe, you get on board with it. Um, but I ended up at uh, 70.80. That is lower than I thought you were going to do it. Yeah. Uh, and so it, it's funny now that you've prefaced that you like, you know, this wasn't what you were anticipating, because I remember when I first put this uh, album on our like our schedule that you put like, yes, and the explanation marks next to it. <laughs> I think you were expecting an older album, but then you got this one. Yeah, well, because I like I said, I'm going to do I that shirt now. <laughs> Oh, I'm still going to wear it. I still like the band. They're pretty good. Um, but like, I just, I didn't know what this album really sounded like. But when I saw Depeche Mode, I was like, sick, we're doing a band that I like. And then it was an album I hadn't heard. And I was like, God, motherfucking damn it. And see, that's exactly <laughs> why I th I was surprised that you rated it lower. Because it's like, holy shit, like you were looking yeah. forward to this. But now I know why at the very least. Uh, yeah. So I did like this album more than you, but I'm not going to say tons more. Uh, I at least B tiered it straight ass B tiered at 74.5. Not too bad. So it's still kind of down there. It is another B tier album indeed because it comes uh, to 72.65. 72 72 72.65. Oh my God. If I was prepared, then I would know that. You said you were prepared before we came back in. If I was more prepared, then I would know that it would be between Queens of the Stone Age and Psychotic Symphony. Oh, sweet. So what is it better than in those two? Wait, so you said 72.65. It is better than Queens of the Stone Age, but it is not as good as Psychotic Symphony. Interesting. But also because, because that Queens of the Stone Age album is very divisive, though. Yeah, that one was uh, 71.82. But uh, as I recall, uh, the lower score for Queens of the Stone Age, I will own that one. That was me. But it was also the first time I've really ever heard them. So it was kind of. And to be fair, that's miss. that's not the right album to be introduced to Queens of the Stone Age. Like Rated R is one that like bigger fans will like kind of appreciate more in the discography where if that's your first album, it's probably yeah. gonna leave a bad taste in your mouth. And I didn't really think about that. I was just like, oh, I kind of want to do Rated R. Yeah, well, I, I think you had mentioned that uh, we're gonna do a second Queens of the Stone Age eventually. eventually. Yep, the uh, the catchphrase there. Um, so hopefully knowing kind of what I'm going into with that band at least, maybe we'll maybe expand out of the b tier but uh as of today we are adding another one to the b tier again seems that way and with that said yeah i mean i guess that's where we're gonna find ourselves b tier but we also find ourselves at the end of the episode oh my god we actually made it i didn't think the episode was ever gonna end even though it wasn't super duper long i don't think think so anyways Four rambling hours, because fine. i'm very tired uh so hey thank you very much for hanging out with us today checking out this episode making it all the way to the end if you sure did or if you indeed did and you must be because you're listening to this right now so hey thank you very much and uh let us know what you thought of this album as i said before down below in the comments of wherever you might be listening or even on our social media pages that's fine too uh let us know like you know what do you think of the album or would you write the songs where would you rate the record why are we right and or wrong please just interact be part of the musical community we want you to do it 
Yes. Thank you. Please. Yes. Thank you. Yes. I mentioned those social media pages, uh, Rate the Record Podcast, Facebook, Instagram, and TikTok. That can all be found at ratetherecord.ca. And of course, so can the album giveaway link, the album request link, kofi.com slash rate the record link. Uh, all those are found in the description down below wherever you're listening, but also over on ratetherecord.ca. So check all that out. And plus all the other streaming links. Maybe you're listening on audio and want to check out YouTube, then by all means, go over there, find the link. If you're watching YouTube and want the audio because maybe you want us on the go or something like that, ratetherecord.ca. Hell yes. I have nothing to add other than just... Uh, reinforcing the stuff you're saying. So yeah, rate the record.ca, do the thing, Spotify, Apple music, uh, Stitcher, YouTube, uh, record giveaway, um, only fans for our feet. I don't know who knows. We haven't really talked. You about have that to find recently. the link for that one. We don't advertise that. You have to find oh. it. Oh, it is so buried. Sign up for an OnlyFans account and just start typing in a lot of different keywords you think we would use. Yeah. And when you finally find our account, let us know. We'll okay. give you $10. Yes. Actually, we'll yes, give you exactly. we'll give you a month of free subscription because it is a paid account. I have nothing to say. I just can't stop laughing. <laughs> I, I just like the idea that someone would spend hours on OnlyFans just searching all <laughs> to these find users. Something that doesn't exist. <laughs> exactly. I would. I would. I would love that so much. That'd be great content. <laughs> I I would actually pay to watch your live stream of someone doing that. <laughs> Just searching OnlyFans, like, where are I? That kind of looks like Savannah. Oh, no, no, no. She's blonde. Oh, my God. My toenails are currently painted green. So if you see it, painted you'll know. green. Yeah, of course. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah, it's not even a display picture of your face. It's just a display picture of your foot. So it's like one of those, like, <laughs> faceless creators. Of course. <laughs> Please check out our OnlyFans. No, but yeah, like literally all the links that we actually do have and that exist are on RateTheRecord.ch, yeah. so check that out. And if you want to reinforce anything, you could have reinforced our album giveaway. So as we mentioned in the beginning, we are giving away Bush's 16 stone for the month of 2023. So if you live in North America and feel like owning a brand new vinyl copy of that particular album, go check out the album giveaway link, sign up for it, and best of luck to you if you do indeed win. Or, I mean, yes, if you sign up. Did you say month of 2023? Don't you mean month of March 2023? Yep. <laughs> I just wanted to make sure. Just want to make sure. Yeah, um, uh, sometimes months do a uh, year does feel like a month, depending on the way things happen. Okay, that means I'm way too tired and I need to go yes. to bed, aka I need work. To, I have work to do, so I can't go to bed yet. So and Savannah fun. has a spoiler for next week. Yeah, exactly. So why don't you go ahead and let us know what to expect? So next week, we have a band that has enlisted the talents of over 100 musicians over the course of their career, but there has only been one, one musician that has appeared on all of their albums, not counting the band themselves. Nine Inch Nails. That sounds reasonable, but no. Oh, that'd be more of like a live touring thing. Yeah. Wow, it this band sounds like names. this band sounds like it sucks and is very not confident in its music. Jesus. <laughs> uh, maybe or they're control freaks. That's also a possibility. Yeah. Anyways, if you can guess what control freak we're listening to next week, maybe you can guess down in the comments below. But until then, go listen to some awesome music. Like maybe if you like Depeche Mode, go listen to some Depeche Mode. And so we'll see you again next week. Take care, friends. Bye bye. <laughs>